Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Janelle Novel. This edition Stop Stories. 74 COVID-19 patients at the Bordelais Correctional Facility make full recoveries. Public interest in the national vaccination program is heightening with thousands of St. Lucians registering. And the Ministry of Equity distributes 400 food packages to the vulnerable in the month of February. The Ministry of Health and Wellness is continuing to provide support to the Bodily Correctional Facility in the management of COVID-19 cases at the institution. Several prevention and control recommendations have been implemented, including isolation measures, restriction to social gatherings, and increased sanitization. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Sharon Belmar George says there has already been a vast improvement in the situation at the prisons. Of the 105 COVID-19 patients, 74 have fully recovered. The Ministry of Health, we have been working with the Bordelais Correctional Facility from quite early in the outbreak to ensure that there are measures in place to reduce the possibility because when you have so many persons um, living closely, the risk is, is higher. So with the first few cases, we did rapid testing to as many persons as possible so that we can get the results quickly and to start off the isolation. We have been working with the directors to ensure isolation of the positive cases and the suspects to reduce the, the impact. And we are continuing to do that and to manage um, um, as, as fast as. Um, up to yesterday, we've had 74 recoveries from there. So they, they are recovering well, but our epidemiology team, they're working closely with the facility to reduce the, the, the transmission of more cases there. Currently, all of the remaining active cases are stable. Members of the public are assured that hands-on measures are being implemented to manage and contain the spread of the virus on compound. Director of the Bordelais Correctional Facility, Hilary Herman, says individuals who tested positive are being accommodated away from the general population. The staff who man the repurposed cell blocks, he clarified, are fully equipped with personal protective gear. Mr. Herman explained that other safety measures and strict adherence to protocols are in full effect. In early February 2021, a donation of 10,000 face masks was made to the correctional facility through the generosity of the government and people of Taiwan. Additionally, the public is reminded that all visitation by family and friends are suspended until further notice, as all safety and security measures are in full effect at this challenging time. Virtual visits are expected to recommence on March 15, 2021. Authorized item drop-offs for inmates are being accommodated daily by appointments 24 hours prior to the planned drop-off. The arrival here of 25,000 doses of the Covishield AstraZeneca vaccine has significantly boosted St. Lucia's ability to manage and mitigate the impacts of COVID-19. Government continues efforts to procure enough vaccines to have every St. Lucian vaccinated. On Thursday, the Ministry of Health and Wellness hosted a vaccination exercise at the Finance Administrative Building. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Sharon Belmar George explained that over 10,000 individuals will be vaccinated with the most recent shipment. As you are aware, we started with our healthcare workers and we're doing the, the critical ones. So what we are doing now is looking at 10,000 and to ensure we have the, the second dose. But we are also working very closely with the COVAX facility because we are awaiting our first batch of doses from them. And they indicated that we would get our full 74,000 before May. So we are hoping that by next week or the week after that we get our first shipment so that there's no break in our dissemination of the vaccine. The vaccine will not only help in reducing transmission of the virus, but it will also reduce severe COVID-19 infection, hospitalization and death. The AstraZeneca vaccine will also help in reducing pressures of treatment and care on the healthcare system and limit the impact of COVID-19. Dr. Belmar George highlighted the significance of the vaccination exercise. Today is extremely important because we, we have representatives from various services coming in um, they are leaders in their, in their own right and it's important for us to get as many persons from the various sectors immunized. So we think that they will definitely assist in, in influencing the rest of our population so we can get a level of herd immunity. 
and public interest in the national vaccination program is heightening with thousands of St. Lucians registering. Hamadi Mark reports. The Ministry of Health and Wellness is progressing with the national immunization drive for the coronavirus. In the second part of the first phase, the drive's current focus is the vaccination of persons 65 years and older and those living with chronic diseases. Residents of Richfor and Bexor within this demographic have now received their first dose of the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine. Teklaja Baptist is the national immunization manager. It is very important that these persons are vaccinated against COVID-19 um, infection against the virus because when these persons um, get infected or if they become infected with the virus, just by nature of their age and their health condition, they are at risk, at very high risk of developing the severe disease, the complications and even death. Jabapta says with the global impact of COVID-19 and the rise of cases in country, the elderly population and persons living with chronic diseases in St. Lucia should take the opportunity to protect themselves from COVID-19. While Phase 1 focuses on people most at risk, accommodation is made for other citizens. Of course, we know that thousands of persons who have registered for the COVID-19 vaccine, who have indicated their desire to have the vaccine, to get immunized against COVID-19, and as such, we have op also opened up to those persons who have registered. The second and third phase of the immunization drive focuses on persons at medium risk and the rest of the population. From the Government Information Service, Hermady Mark reporting. Meantime, health teams were stationed at the House of Assembly where parliamentarians and staff of parliament received their first jab of the AstraZeneca vaccine. More from Jesse Leos. More parliamentarians got vaccinated this week as part of the Ministry of Health's mission to build public trust early on in its national campaign. On Thursday, 4th March, a vaccination centre was set up at Parliament Building to accommodate. Shortly after taking his injection at that location, Leader of the Parliamentary Opposition, Honourable Philip J. Pierre, reaffirmed his support of the COVID-19 vaccine. It was always my intention to take it. And I want to encourage all solutions to take it because in the fight against COVID, we have to follow the science. And the science is that the vaccination is, in, is a means where we can protect ourselves and mitigate against the, the effects of this dreaded virus. I want to encourage all solutions to follow. I want to say to the people who are most vulnerable to ensure that they follow the science and get vaccinated. Speaker of the House of Assembly, Honorable Andy Daniel, was also vaccinated at Parliament Building on Thursday. As Speaker of the House of Assembly, as one of the leaders of, in St. Lucia, we must all lead by example. We must take the first step so that the people, the nation, will follow. And it is very important that us, the leaders of St. Lucia, take that step to show St. Lucia that it is in the best interest to be vaccinated. The Ministry of Health this week intensified its vaccination drive with a 13-venue schedule island-wide for senior citizens and persons with chronic health conditions. The feedback on the ground has been very good um, thus far. The clinics have been very heavy with a full flow throughout the day. And we anticipate tomorrow as we have um, six clinic sites available that we will get increases in numbers. That was Chief Medical Officer Dr. Sharon Belmont-George. Uh, Dr. George adds that plans are underway to offer vaccination to the island's teachers and the tourism sector workforce in the coming weeks. The public, meanwhile, is encouraged to register urgently with their nearest community wellness center or online at hmi.govt.lc. For the Government Information Service, I am Jesse Leons reporting. Vaccination continues in the communities on Saturday, March 6, 2021, at the Grosily Resource Center and the Philip Marsley Grounds in Viewfort. Prime Minister the Honorable Alan Chastney spent this week visiting the vaccination sites around the island. Look, I'm very excited. Obviously, the, you can see the relationship that the health centers have with the communities. We've had um, almost 100 people, uh, and we have not even gotten into the, half, the afternoon as, uh, as yet. 
So the response has been very positive in taking the vaccine and the, the level of enthusiasm. And certainly uh, everybody has commented on how great the nurses have been. So uh, look, the war against COVID has begun. And for the first time, we really have something in which we now can be much more aggressive in dealing with COVID. And I'm really hoping that all solutions will follow suit of what we've seen today and coming out and, and becoming vac vaccinated. One other note on the vaccines, the procurement process. CARICOM governments have been engaged in discussions with manufacturing companies and agencies to source approved COVID-19 vaccines for their populations. Securing the vaccines is not an easy process, though, as we hear in this report by Toussaint King English Francis of CARICOM News Time. Heads of government have reiterated their concerns about COVID-19 vaccine access and have once again called for equity in the supply chains to inoculate citizens and bolster their economies. Chairman of CARICOM, Prime Minister Keith Rowley, shared with the regional media the grave situation CARICOM faces trying to obtain vaccines against COVID-19. What has happened is that once the vaccines became approved, they then became in demand and in short supply because there isn't enough vaccine to go around for everybody who needs it. La countries with deep pockets and great influence have contracted the early production of this vaccine and similar ones in some of the bigger countries. So that what is the, the vaccine that is made in India is transported out of India to other countries who have paid or contracted for it at this time. So what we have been experiencing as small countries with small pockets, when we make contact with those companies, like the one that is doing it in India, you are being told, as we are being told, we are unable to take an order from you. However, there are other companies who have got approvals, but they too are contracted by the countries that had the influence to pay and to contract the original supplies. What some of those countries have been saying to us, okay, we can give you a small amount, we can sell you a small amount, but only if your order is up to a certain size. And one of the conditions under which they are attempt to sell us is that it has to be in a confidential arrangement, meaning that we are not going to expose what we've been charged for it. What we've discovered in that arrangement is that different people can be charged hugely different prices and required by contract to keep those prices confidential. Chairman of CARICOM, Prime Minister Honorable Keith Rowley of Trinidad and Tobago ending that report by Toussaint King English Francis of CARICOM News Time. Government continues to provide social protection to the poor and vulnerable, particularly amid the impact of COVID-19. In February 2021, the Ministry of Equity, Social Justice, Local Government and Empowerment distributed 400 food packages to beneficiaries of the Child Disability Grant and persons living with HIV-AIDS. This initiative constitutes part of the government's recovery and resilience strategies that form part of the national response to the COVID-19 pandemic. Pandemic. The Ministry is grateful for the level of collaboration with its corporate private sector partners to date and is particularly appreciative of the generous donations received. A cheque of 45,630 Eastern Caribbean dollars from the National Community Foundation went towards the purchasing of food items for distribution to these 400 vulnerable households island wide. Protecting the poor, marginalized, and most vulnerable of the population remains a priority for the government of St. Lucia, and while the challenges are beyond small developing states like St. Lucia, it remains resolute in its efforts as it continues to implement programs such as these. This is NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle Aquayol. Si ou jouen nan bil ki ho, gade si site nou ka koule. Se pa tout lè ou ka ywe, kote site nan ka koule. Avan ou kouye ou asko, examine site nan pa kou. E kouye ni mi woa ki asou mita. Pa se ve dloa pou 30 minit pou yon neditan. Deviwe e kouye ni me woa ki asou mita. Si ni me woa chanje, site nan ka koule. Kouye an ploma pou oje poblem la vitman. 
ça c'est en commission Rodwasco. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle à Quayol. Monsieur Tan, Janelle. Monsieur, Madame, Département de la responsabilité pour information en gouvernement de l'OCI, GIS, à ce moment télévision nationale pays à NTN, qui a posé une nouvelle à Quayol, présenté au Primus Hutchinson. Après plusieurs mois, qui tenait le laboratoire Ezra Long à bas en pile forcément, comme il tenait un lot de maladies coronaires qui déjà comblé à ce À présent, le laboratoire, j'ai rapporté que tout ça qu'on a dans un bout. Commencé depuis mercredi, le 3e à mois de mars, le laboratoire Ezra Long, j'ai bien capable pour produire plus de 24 mois de temps. Le directeur pour le laboratoire Ezra Long, Dr. Wayne Félicien, déclare que de la période le 26 pour le 28 février, il était capable de produire 2408 samples en trois jours seulement. Il dit aussi depuis le premier pour le 3 en mois d'août, l'année passée, il était capable de tester 2025 personnes. Ça veut dire que travailler à laboratoire, il a fait un mois de travail dans seulement une semaine. Selon le docteur Félicien, il était venu très nécessaire pour te vivre examiner en cette façon il était capable pour adresser ce cas de travail qui était déjà à sous doyo alors il était nécessaire pour implémenter divers modes nouveaux pour faire plus facile pour improver à sous degré travail qui il a fait le docteur dit aussi il a employé un ingénieur pour ça vivre ranger les équipements les équipements ça là ni fort et aussi il a monté équipement robot qui a ça adressé il a ça 89 simple maladie à 80 minutes avant ça, c'était toi tu avais été capable pour faire un excès simple en ion pour donner du temps. Il dit que ça aussi fait possible pour augmenter ces quantités de tests qui s'est fait de moins en jour. Docteur Félicien remarque qu'il y a tenu pour employer plus de travailleurs pour adresser à faire administration, sorti 3 pour 6 pour y 24 mois de temps. Il dit que il était nécessaire aussi pour acheter plus d'équipements et computers. Le directeur Félicien a annoncé que le laboratoire Ezra Long à présent bien capable pour adresser à 762 pour 1 126 samples tous les jours entre 24 mois de temps. En parlant de ça, le directeur du laboratoire forensic Fernando Henry a déclaré qu'il a pris l'effort en place pour faire la bla capable pour opérer plus effectivement et à un haut degré et qu'il y a un pays qui a des à sous à toutes les à même de temps, le laboratoire Ezra Long a trouvé ce service de laboratoire forensic. Excellent, Mademoiselle Henry, le laboratoire a servi toute technologie pour faire plus facile pour augmenter la capacité de test en tout pays. Quand on cite cette ci j'ai approuvé l'assistance financière pour le financement et le développement du projet de l'eau en vieux fort. Ça fait par yon loan hot bank développement caribla CDB CDB a ajouté yon commerce 7 millions 378 dollars américains pour projet ça là à parmi l'agence là c'est 4 millions 178 dollars américains pour ressources de la place avec égalité et 3 millions 200 000 dollars américains qui CDB trouvé hot bank des investissements Europe ministre des affaires agriculture honorable Ezekiel Joseph pour cette le travail, avec le travail pour la deuxième phase du projet Sala, pendant qu'il a fait une présentation en Kaye Parlement. Le ministre agricole a annoncé que le projet a embrassé la réhabilitation du système de traitement de l'eau à beau séjour. Il dit aussi qu'il y a un autre travail à bas projet Sala, c'est la construction d'un établissement nouveau pour traiter de l'eau qui a une capacité de 8640 mètres pieds cubiques. Il y a une place pour sembler à faire qu'un mic à bosser jour aussi. Il dit aussi, là, il y a une place 8,7 km long de qui connaît qu'on HDP. Ministre Joseph a annoncé que la Kaini y a une grande ligne de tuyau sorti bosser jour pour juste Binfield et aussi pour entrer à la Tunisie. Mais Ministre Joseph fait comprendre que le grand projet de développement de l'eau, ce n'est pas seulement pour faire ça notre vie fort. Il a annoncé que la Kaini ligne de tuyau sorti à OG pour laborer et pour projet qui a adressé par est sud vieux fort nord vieux fort et laborer. Gouvernement cette ci très concerné de plusieurs annoncements 
qui a fait en public là, qui a montré un annoncement, pas comme si dit, il y a sorti le gouvernement pays. Le gouvernement s'est laissé, qui a fait public là, savent qui, c'est un annoncement, ça n'a pas sorti le gouvernement, et que la panique, pièce la vérité, particulièrement, ça qui n'est pas fait, et puis malade du corona. Le gouvernement qui a encouragé le public là, pour faire assurer qu'il y a trouvé information qui est officielle, dans ces divers départements de gouvernement, et pièce de qualité annoncement qui n'est pas fait, et puis malade du corona, ça sortit seulement hors de ressources officielles gouvernement. Les autorités qui avaient dit même public là pour nous bout de l'habitude de ça là, pour s'y mettre information qui se manchonne, qui a montré à comme si dit, je sortis hors de gouvernement cette là-ci, qui n'est pas fait et puis malade du corona. Ces informations ça là, n'est pas sorti principalement hors du ministère de santé. Il y a fait les membres publics qui savent que la panique, pièce changement qui a fait pour ces nédits à Kofiou. Et tout ce n'est du temps pour que vous restez même quand vous êtes à te passer. Et ça, c'est un souhait pour 4 à pour bon matin, chaque jour. Là aussi, il y a une information qui n'est pas vraie, qui a sous nom le ministre du gouvernement par page Facebook, Instagram et Twitter. Le bureau du premier ministre a informé le public qui a parlé absolument pièce du ministre du gouvernement qui a passé la commission concernant la santé et qui a donné l'argent pour conduire pièces action bas au gouvernement qui a conseillé moun qui a servi les médias sociaux pour prendre garde et prendre précaution et pas mettre information personnelle ou et ben pour une pièce communication et puis personne et ben pour payer pièces l'argent en situation comme ça Monsieur Madame ça c'est côté nous on trouve votre nouvelle là mon cher Monsieur autant pour qu'à garder mon cher Boyan invitation pour que nous puissions considérer qu'on se fait la vie dans un pays de tout l'autre Nouvelle à Kouyol. Tout le monde à tout. Un bon fin de semaine. Merci à Pil Primus. That brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Novel.